Hello everyone, this is the start of a new series on examining various ships and alternative ways to balance them. And don't worry, I still intend to make my PvP videos with commentary. I'm actually working on one right now, uh, it's just, with this particular format, it doesn't rely heavily on any kind of fight footage, and I can make these pretty easily. This is just a trial run of the series, so things may change over time, and I'm open to changes you'd like to see. I don't expect changes from CCP or the CSM from these videos, they are just a fun thought experiment on ways to improve the meta and allow less popular ships to have other roles or improvements to existing roles. If you guys like this idea for a series, let me know, I've got plenty of ideas for ships and balance, it's part of the reason why I ran for the CSM. Feel free to comment below if there are any ships specifically you'd like to, you'd like to see rebalanced so I can start including them in my future videos. We're going to start this series off with the Roke and how to make it a, a multi-role ship to give Kaldari some additional battleship options. The first thing I want to talk about is going back to this old dev blog back in April of 2013, back when CCP was doing all the T1 battleship terracides. Uh, so the reason why Kaldari are kind of at a weird disadvantage is because every race should have two combat battleships and one attack battleship. Currently Kaldari only has one attack battleship and one combat battleship. The differences between combat and attack battleships are that combat battleships are normally slower but tankier while attack battleships are faster and less tanky. So in Kaldari's case the Raven is the attack battleship, the Roke is the combat battleship. Now where Kaldari are unique is that they have a disruption battleship, which is a scorpion, which is completely different than a combat or an attack battleship, as it's slower and it has less EHP. So with the rogue here, what we're trying to do, since Kaldari only has one combat and one attack battleship, is we're going to make the rogue multi-roll, uh, essentially filling in for two combat battleships but in in different ways so by retaining the hybrid bonus it can still be bonus as a, a hybrid hole or a sniper hole but then if you give it the eight launchers you could also use it alternatively as a missile battleship so that way it, it, it again it becomes a multi-role ship so it, it's very flexible for using either missiles or hybrids to achieve whatever you're wanting to get out of it so you could make it like a rapid heavy missile brawler, a torpedo brawler, or you could use it with cruise missiles and like fleet fights, and it would have a much, uh, it, with a tanking bonus, it would be a, a lot more solid of a ship with cruise missiles compared to the Raven, whereas the Raven would have the range bonus, so e both the Raven and the Roke would serve different roles uh, since based off their bonuses. Now I'm going to present three different fits, just to kind of give an example of what the rogue would look like with missiles. Uh, now keep in mind, literally nothing has changed, so the rogue still has the same CPU, it still has the same power grid, has the same traits. The only thing that's different is that we've added four additional launchers. So the three fits I'm going to run through are going to be a rapid heavy missile fit, a cruise missile fit, and a torpedo fit. So both the torpedo fit and the rapid heavy fit are both uh, brawler setups. The rapid heavy fit is essentially, if you've ever flown a, uh, a brawl raven, kind of pretty much the same thing. Whereas the cruise missile fit is more of a fleet fit, just to kind of give an example of you know what it might look like with cruise missiles and how the how it all fits together. So we'll start off with the rapid heavy missile fit. Uh, again, it's fit pretty much just like a Rapid Heavy Missile Raven, so you have dual XLASBs, uh, Invuln, or Multispectrum if you want to call it that now, Grappler, Scram, MJD, Triple BCU, and DCU. Um, again, with the same fitting that the Roke has, this all fits pretty easily, you just have to add a, a coprocessor, which you also have to use on a Raven. Um, the differences between like the Roke and the Raven with Rapid Heavies uh, the Raven does have the utility high with the Newt, although there's nothing stopping you from just dropping a launcher and adding a, uh, a heavy Newt or utility if you want it. It doesn't really hurt anything. You just lose a little bit of damage. Um, but you should still have plenty of fitting, as you can tell from the power grid left available. You have plenty of power grid to play with. 
the the main differences here is that the rope will have a higher volley or higher alpha with the missiles because you're using eight launchers compared to the Raven 6. The DPS between both the Raven and the Rogue is identical. So if you're using um, Fury heavy missiles, both ships do 1,024 DPS. Um, obviously, the you know there's no range bonuses on the Raven for rapid heavy, so that doesn't apply. Uh, the tanking, though, the Rogue does tank better than the Raven. To get the Raven close to the same as the Rogue, you have to use two invulns, which it actually struggles to fit due to CPU. Whereas the Rogue just only needs to use one uh, invuln. So that it, it makes it a lot more slot efficient and tankier. It's about 100, 150 DPS more that it can tank compared to the Raven. So it, it, again, it just gives it more functionality from this roll and from the Raven, they, they're both identical in DPS, the Raven just shoots faster, which isn't really that helpful with Rapid Heavies because you have a limited clip. Whereas the Rogue, you'll actually get more damage per clip. Even if you were to drop one launcher for like a utility high, you would still have more damage per clip than the Raven. This next fit is going to be the Cruise Missile Launcher fit, uh, mainly set up for like a fleet fight. Uh, you know, I'll say it now, I'm not an expert on fleet fits. I don't really do fleet combat a whole lot, so I'm sure it could be optimized, such as probably dropping one of the extenders for another multi-spec, and then changing a rig for an extender. I think that actually gives you a little bit more tank than the fit I have right now, it gives you like 120,000. Um, and then when you give it uh, links, you get to about 140,000, or a little over 140,000. So compared to things like a Raven, you know, it obviously has a lot more tank thanks to the tank bonus. Uh, the only thing that you're losing is the the range. So if you're not doing things like shooting a Citadel, where you need to stay at, you know, max range, uh, it doesn't really matter too much. So you could use this like home defense uh, or just other fleet engagements where range isn't necessarily uh, needed. I did include the hydraulic bay thruster on it just to match its lock range. With the SIG amp you get 176 km lock range and then you get 170 km range with just standard faction cruise missiles. So I mean it's pretty cut and dry uh, as far as comparing it to like the Raven. Again the same thing applies here that applied with the rapid heavy missile fit. Because you have 8 launchers instead of 6 you do have a higher volley compared to the Raven. The DPS is the same just a higher volley. Uh, so uh, regarding things like alpha and things like that, the rogue will be a little bit better. Um, it'll just be slower at, at actually shooting the missiles. So again, it's just a, a really easy example. It's got plenty of fitting. Uh, e CPU, power grid, none of it's maxed out. Even with swapping the large shield extender for another invul, you still have plenty of CPU to play with. So it makes it still very versatile with whatever you want to do with a fleet fit. Uh, without having to punch in a bunch of power grid or CPU mods. And again, this is the same exact stats that it has right now, it just has eight launchers installed. The last fit that we'll talk about is the torpedo fit that I have here. This one is set up mainly for brawling, kind of like a pretty much a solo fit. Um, fitting is pretty pretty tight on this one, that's mainly because torpedoes take just a ton of fitting, so it's not really unexpected that we'd run into some fitting issues. So we're at 99.6% utilization of CPU, uh, but looking at the fit, I didn't really have to do anything drastic, you just had to drop down to meta target painter, grappler, and then uh, damage control, and then you could use the storyline coprocessor, which is really cheap. So again, you're not really having to spend a bunch here to make this fit. Tanking, yeah, it's a little lacking with just a single XLASB, um, but all things considered, you're doing anywhere from 1100 to 1400 DPS with a torpedo fit with good application. So it's meant really just to kind of burn through uh, whatever you're fighting as quickly as possible and then get out through the micro jump drive. With, with no utility high, again, it's a little a little restricted or a little limited, but it, you know, it'd be up to you if you want to go with the utility high, you just lose a little bit of damage, um, so that way you can have a newt. But you know, again, there's no real issues with fitting, 
with even torpedoes which have really bad fitting. Um, so it just kind of shows that you, you don't really have to do anything to the soft stats of the Roke with CPU or power grid. You just need to give it four more launchers and it'll all fit and, and work just fine. Perhaps the only other thing on the Roke that I'd like to see you know, potentially addressed uh, is its drone bay. Granted, you know, it's it's a Kaldari battleship and Kaldari in general don't have big drone bays, but it's still a battleship. And every other Kaldari battleship, the, the Raven, the Scorpion Navy issue, even the regular Scorpion, um, the Raven Navy issue, they all get at least a 75 M3 drone bay which I think the Roke would be nice to have just so it has a little bit more utility so you could use one medium drone or one medium set of drones and then one small set of drones. Um, it just it, It's really limiting on a battleship to just only be able to you know have one set of medium drones or two sets of small drones. Um, and then the other thing which is really minor don't expect it to ever change but it would be nice if the Roke was just a little bit faster. You know not, not like I want it to be some typhoon or mercurial fast but a little bit more speed would would be nice because i would also open up some fits for um like blasters where you could at least kite a little bit and have that and actually uh make use of the projection bonus with blasters rather than always having to rely on rail guns obviously you're not going to shoot as far as rail guns but it's kind of a different engagement scenario if you're using blasters with knoll you can project pretty easily out to like 50 kilometers. It's just you're so slow, everything's going to catch up to you, and you know you're, you're going to die pretty easily, especially if you're in like a kiting fit that has nanos and things like that, where you don't really have much tank. And that pretty much does it for this video. Um, I want to try to keep these videos probably between about five or ten minutes long. I don't want them to really drag out too long. This one was a little longer in general because I had to do the introduction and explain kind of what we're doing here. In future videos though, it will be able to cut off a few minutes. Um, so, you know, I don't want these to get too bogged down with just looking at Pypha because I know that's not super exciting to some of y'all. This is more just to give an example of how things can be improved without drastically changing them or relying on gimmicks. So let me know what you think below. You know, see if there's any ships that you want me to go through to see just what my opinion would be to change them. And, uh, you know, we can get kind of get some interaction and, and uh, kind of go from there.